Hi everybody, this is our first um, our first little session of 2021 and we're going to talk about a clean slate. Have you ever had a conflict with someone and they started rehearsing um, things that you did, uh, back things that you did, you know, a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago and ways that you offended them or something that you said wrong and it, you know, do you remember five years ago when you did this or 15 years ago when you said that or, you know, when you looked at me wrong, you know, eight years ago? Um, you know, we hear that often in counseling and, you know, the two parties will be talking about ways that each other has offended each other and they'll say, well, you remember two years ago when you did this or 10 years ago when you did this or, do you remember when you did this? Or you remember when you did this? And it seems like they're grasping for, you know, things that, you know, just things that you can't even believe that they're remembering from years ago. But when people are doing that, you realize that they're harboring, um, they, their heart is just full of harbored hurts and offenses. And when they're speaking, they're just unloading a heart that's full of garbage and evil thoughts that they've held against someone for years. Sometimes we can be hurt and offended by things that people have done to us. And sometimes we can be hurt and offended by things that have happened to someone else. You know, someone told us that they were hurt. Someone told us that something, somebody did something to them. And sometimes we can harbor deeper, resentment and hurt about something that someone did to somebody else because it's like we're caring for that person if we harbor that guilt that uh hurt for them and um that's that that's happened to uh us a lot as pastors you know people gossip and spread things about pastors or, or this can happen about people if you're if you're a boss people gossip and, and spread rumors about their boss that have absolutely no truth whatsoever. And people can get upset and angry and carry that around with them for years and years and years. And then sometime, you know, even years later than, than they heard that, in hurt and anger, they'll confront you and say, why did you do that? Or why did you say that? And you have to tell them, well, you know, that never happened or we never said that. You know, God has a better way for us to deal with hurts and offenses than, you know, to be harboring, harboring them and, and having them just fester in our hearts for years and years and years and just get eating us up and getting, getting us bitter and angry. It's called love and forgiveness. And as we start this near, new year of 2021, I challenge you to wipe the slate of your heart clean of any hurt or any unforgiveness that you have in your heart. And a clean slate means that you're not considering anything that's happened to you in the past. In 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the very last verse, I'm going to read that and then I'm going to start reading in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, and now I will show you the most excellent way. And that's the way we want to go. We want to go the best way, the most excellent way. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have, if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Well, that's saying a lot, isn't it? You know, we can have all kinds of spiritual gifts and deep revelations and be able to intercede in the spirit and, and you know, have all these spiritual gifts and we can be prophets and be well known and everything. But if we don't have love, we are a big zero in God's eyes. You know, if, uh, if we have all these wonderful spiritual gifts, but if we're talking behind people's backs, if we're backbiting, if we're harboring offenses, we are not walking in love and that's not good. And then in verse three, it says, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but I have not love, I gain nothing. 
So if we give to the poor and we give to the needy and we give to this person and give to that person, but if we're talking behind their back and if we're harboring offenses and we're, we're harboring uh, things that people have done and we're not uh, walking in love, the Bible says we're nothing. That's nothing. We gain nothing. We get no rewards in heaven for everything that we give away. Now it gives us and a definition of what love, how love does act. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. And that's not, that is what we're concentrating in on today. It keeps no record of wrongs. So in other words, love keeps a clean slate in their heart. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You know, you can tell if a person is walking in love or not. If they have a if their heart is just full of offense and you know there's some people that really really you know our human nature really enjoys hearing bad things about people and enjoys gossip but a person that walks in love rejoices in hearing the truth in hearing good things about people a person walking in love will not be harboring things in their heart about you know, well, you did this two years ago, or you did this three years ago, or you said this to this person five years ago. A person walking in love, those things are not in their heart, so they're not going to come out of their mouth. And in there it said that um, it keeps no record of wrong. And in the King James Version, it says that they think no evil. In um, the... Um, Greek of that says it, that they take no inventory, that they make no conclusion about that, that they don't count evil, that they don't impute evil to people. They don't keep number of it and they don't reckon evil. So a person walking in love isn't, isn't you know, keeping a tally of the evil things that a person has done or, or making a record of it or keeping keeping count of the bad things that a person has done or the or the imagined bad things that a person has done or the bad things that you know have reported that that person has done that's not love and we found that the best thing to do is if someone tells you that someone has done something that has offended them um, the best thing to do is to try to reconcile those people and try to find out the truth yourself instead of taking that offense on in Psalm 32, verse 1, it says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt. And you know, you have the power to do that in people's lives. If someone has offended you, if someone has sinned against you, if someone has slighted you in some way or said something hurtful to you, you have the power to forgive them. You have the power to put that sin out of your sight. You have the power to not record that. And you have the power to give them joy. Um, and that's an awesome power. And that's just such a freedom to be able to give that to people. And um, Jesus told us how important forgiveness is, is. And he said that if we don't forgive others that we won't be forgiven so that's that's pretty doggone important in matthew 6 um uh the disciples asked how they should pray and jesus said this then is how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, 
your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You know, I've heard Christians pray that, that uh, when people sin against them, that I have heard Christians pray that they would be destroyed, that evil would come upon them, that, you know, what they did, you know, that, that they'd be destroyed, you know. But that is, that is a prayer that God is not going to answer, and it is not a scriptural prayer at all. And uh, God wants us to forgive others. And it's a very hard thing to do. We need, need God's grace and we need God's help to do it. And sometimes when we forgive give other people, um, what they have done to us keeps coming up in our mind and we keep remembering it. But we need, just need to remember that we've forgiven them and that God has forgiven them. And we need to ask God to fill our hearts with love for that person. And I also... Uh, you know, feel compelled to say that, you know, if, if there's someone that has abused you, or if you're dealing with a, a person that has a gambling problem or an addiction, you know, you can forgive that person, but the, the problem still needs to be taken care of. You can't just, um, forgiving someone doesn't mean that you can't take care of a problem that needs to be taken care of. And, um, Jesus has given us, um, not only forgiveness for us, but he's given us a responsibility to forgive other people and to extend forgiveness to other people. In 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, um, if, you, if you are at home and you can read it, start in, in verse 11, it, it just is a wonderful passage of scripture talking about the wonderful things that the Lord has done for us. But in verse 18, it says, And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. See, God has reconciled, uh, through Jesus Christ, God has reconciled us back in our relationship to him. And now God has given us the task of reconciling people back to to the Lord. And we can't do that if we're harboring, uh, you know, offenses in our heart. We can't reconcile people to the Lord if we have that in our heart. It says in verse 19, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. So we're to be imitators of Jesus Christ. So we shouldn't be counting people's sins against them. And he, uh, and he, let's see, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for God, Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Isn't that awesome? So I just encourage you to participate in this ministry of reconciliation to bring people to the Lord and to do that we need to first walk in love and walk in forgiveness people need to see that our hearts are just overflowing with love and forgiveness and if they see see our hearts full of anger and bitterness and strife and offense nobody's going to want what we have and if they see our hearts that that our the, the uh, slate of our heart is wiped clean and it's just full of love and forgiveness, th that's going to attract people and we're going to be able to win people to the Lord. So as this new year starts, I just encourage you to wipe the slate of your heart clean and carry no offense in your heart in this new year. Bye-bye.